good evening everyone uh, thank you hyderabad iscm dr subha reddy sir and dr niranjan sir for giving me the opportunity to present in the cmap program today we will going to discuss regarding the sonar anatomy of the airway so upper airway ultrasound is a valuable non invasive simple and portable point of care ultrasound for evaluation of airway management even when the anatomy is distorted by some pathology like tumors or in trauma ultrasound enables us to identify important sono anatomy of upper airway such as thyroid cartilage epiglottis cricoid cartilage cricothyroid membrane tracheal cartilages and esophagus understanding this applied sono anatomy facilitate the clinician to use ultrasound for assessment of airway anatomy for difficult intubations endotracheal tube placement position assessment of airway size especially in pediatric group of uh, patients percutaneous needle cricothyroid anatomy and tracheostomy procedures prediction of post extubation strider so initially we'll deal with the normal anatomy and then we'll look into how does the airway looks in the sono anatomy so airway can be divided into upper airway which comprises of the nasal airways is nasopharynx and the structure of importance in sono anatomy is the larynx then comes the larger airways the trachea and the trachea bifurcates into the uh, left and right main bronchus this is the uh, laryngoscopic view of the epigl uh, epiglottis as well as the vocal cords you can see the vocal cords the laryngeal inlet the vestibular fold the trachea airy epiglottic fold arytenoid mucosa corniculate tubercle and cuneiform tubercle most of the airway structures for assessment are superficial and are found within 5 cm from the skin therefore a linear probe with a frequency of 5 to 15 megahertz is most often adequate a low frequency curvy linear probe is ideal for investigating areas of the tongue submandibular and supraglottic regions encountering air was initially considered to be a challenge for sonographic studies but later on the understanding the artifacts produced by air can provide useful information for diagnosis as well as treatment this is the sonographic view of the airway here you can see in the first slide the thyroid cartilage which is hypoechoic followed by the hyperechoic cricothyroid membrane and the cricoid cartilage which is hypoechoic anechoic and followed by the tracheal cartilages here for easy understanding i have depicted the thyroid cartilage in the red color cricoid cartilage in the red color and the cricothyroid membrane in green color you can see the air mucosal interface which is nothing but the artifacts whatever is produced by reverberation of the air so you can see the air mucosal interface in the blue color this is another view when you slide down the probe uh, the linear probe when you slide down quadrally you can see the uh, tracheal cartilages in the cricoid cartilage if you slide down more you can see the thyroid uh, tracheal cartilages t1 t2 t3 and t4 which appears like a string of pearls and the air mucosal interface is again depicted in the blue color if you slide down further and changing the position of the probe into horizontal you can see the cricoid cartilage as inverted u shaped structure with the air mucosal interface as the hyperechoic structure this if you slide down further with the probe position horizontal you can see the thyroid isthmus as well as the thyroid gland and the tracheal cartilages with the air mucosal interface as well as the common tail artifacts if you slide down further and slightly tilt uh, the probe either to the right side or the left side you can see the esophagus and the carotid artery this view is important in identifying the tracheal intubation level which we will discuss in the further slides this is the view of the vocal cords where you can see the vocal cords in abduction as well as in the adduction these are the arytenoid cartilages these are the vocal ligaments this is one more slide which depicts the thyroid cartilage with the cricothyroid membrane 
and the cricoid cartilage with air mucosal interface. And this is nothing but the pretracheal uh, fascia. As we have gone through how the airway looks in the ultrasound, we will now discuss regarding the usage of ultrasound in the regular critical care day-to-day -day practice. First point is prediction of difficult laryngoscopy in surgical patients. The relationship of various structures, their distances and the angles they form with each other could be a potential marker for predicting difficult airway. This could also be used to correlate with Malampati as well as Cormac Lehane scores. Pretracheal soft tissue level, uh, distance was studied by Ezri et al. They have investigated the role of ultrasound in predicting difficult airway in obese Israeli population by measuring the distance from the skin to trachea at various levels in the anterior neck. They found out that if the uh, pretracheal soft tissue thickness is more, then the patient might have a difficult laryngoscopy in the OT as well as in the ICU. These are the difficult picture depicting diff uh, different uh, uh, pretracheal soft tissue levels as well as the other thickness levels which can be measured and can be used to predict difficult laryngoscopy as well as intubation. You can see here skin to hyoid cartilage, skin to hyoid cartilage, skin to epiglottics level, skin to vocal cords level, skin to tracheal uh, thickness levels. We can predict difficult intubation as well as laryngoscopy. This is the uh, sonographic view depicting the skin to the arytenoid cartilage level, uh, skin to thyroid isthmus level, skin to hyoid cartilage level, and this is the uh, basically the using the curvilinear probe. If you see the base of the tongue, you can cal uh, measure the width of the tongue also, which can be used as a predictor for difficult laryngoscopic laryngoscopy. This is skin to epiglottis sonographic view. Uh, so coming to the second usage of uh, ultrasound. Ultrasound can also be used to predict endotracheal tube size. Ultrasound-based subglottic diameter measurement can be used to predict endotracheal tube size, especially in pediatric patients. Several studies have demonstrated the ultrasound-based measurements of the subglottic diameter correlate well with that obtained by MRI, which is the gold standard, as well as the CT scan. So as you can see here, the ultrasound linear probe at the required cartilage, you can see the subglottic diameter measurement. So this subglottic diameter measurement based on the standard charts, you can use to uh, select the endotracheal tube size. Coming to the third usage, common usage of the uh, uh, sonography for the confirmation of endotracheal tube placement. If you see only one air mucosal interface, then you can safely say that the tube, endotracheal tube is in trachea only. So that is the confirmation of the placement of the endotracheal tube into the trachea. But whenever you see two air mucosal interface, one at the trachea level, one in the esophagus level, which is known as the double track sign, this is the uh, uh, indicates the esophageal intubation. So you need to react fast and to do a proper tracheal intubation. It cannot be also done in real time, which is uh, like uh, depicted by one more sign, goose sign, where you can see the entry of the tube into the esophagus. Fourth usage of sonography, the tracheostomy. Ultrasound is useful in lo localizing the trachea and the site for performing the tracheostomy also, thereby preventing complications such as pneumothorax, uh, in advertent vessel injury causing hemothorax, tracheal links can also be accurately localized, thereby avoiding the required by the first tracheal link incision, which can result in stenosis. Here you can see uh, uh, vessels uh, exactly in the pretracheal fascia. Uh, so if you can avoid uh, the uh, needle placement in uh, in the vessel area, then you can probably avoid the uh, bleeding complications in the tracheostomy. Coming to the other usage of uh, sonography, localization of cricothyroid membrane and cricothyroidotomy. 
pre procedure ultrasound can help in locating anatomical structures and abnormal vasculature in addition to the ability to measure the distance per insertion here you can see the thyroid cartilage and the cricoid cartilage the hyperechoic whatever structure you are seeing is a cricothyroid membrane you can take help of the ultrasound to localize this membrane this hyperechoic structure formed by the air mucosal interface and then exactly insert the needle which would help in avoiding complications during the procedure airway blocks commonly used in uh, ot uh, where you can identify the anatomical structures relevant to the airway and you can exactly deliver the block especially the superior laryngeal nerve it is especially used, visualized in 81% of the patients other usage most important usage is the prediction of post extubation strider studies have compared the airway column with the level of cricothyroid membrane before and after et tube cuff deflation as a surrogate for the conventional cuff leak test what we use what we do regularly at the bedside airway column with the difference of 0.9 mm was significant in predicting post extubation strider we have one study from hyderabad uh, also uh, done by venkata gowda and uh, manimala rao where they have uh, published it in, in uh, ijccm where they have shown an excellent prediction of post extubation strider by measuring the airway column width uh, this is the airway column width what you are uh, seeing with the endotracheal tube cuff inflated and deflation if you uh, uh, can show the difference between both of them then you can exactly predict the post extubation strider in your patients thank you Thank you. 